another one to watch. And we mentioned the SMX playoff bump battle. Chisholm and Kulas, Nicoletti, Welton, a lot of guys fighting for that. Yeah, and I noticed Chase didn't go to that far inside gate either. Oh. So he's a few positions over. So, yeah, that's probably yeah. four gates out. Yeah. So this is it. Can Hunter Lawrence or someone else end the win streak? That stands at four in a row overall for Chase Sexton. It's time to bring it up. Butts Creek revs her up. Gates down. Hunter Lawrence again. Lights out on the starts this year. Plessinger right behind him in the Malcolm Stewart. Better start for Chase Sexton. Eli got buried in the pack. He was in the mid pack. Tough start for him, but Hunter Lawrence exactly where you wanted to be. Now that tire, that scoop tire paid off. Now you have to figure it out and deal with it around this racetrack. But great start for the 96 and the fever. First time he's been up here in the top three. Hang on to your training teammate, Aaron Plessinger. Good to see him up there. And looks like Chase Sexton in fourth place. All right, yeah, that's Malcolm Stewart third. JT, what are you seeing? Well, for Hunter, I think it's going to be important. You saw him spin that rear tire up, trying to stick that inside line. He's going to want to stay in the rut, right? He's going to be searching for berms, searching for ruts. The last place he wants to be is on the hard inside where there's no real dirt to lean into. So watch here. He'll probably make adjustments. He may have to go from lines that he wants to into lines where that tire will work, but he's going to be sourcing that or sussing that out here in the first lap. Yeah, that's a great point. I was going to mention that. Um, the good part is he, if he's out front, he can dictate. So the way this track is, he has an opportunity to, to figure it out while he's out front. But as you can see him, he's already losing the rear end once he tries to get out of some of these corners. So I'm sure he'll make the difference and make those adjustments as Aaron Plessinger tries Whoa, to. Oh, it's going to be tough. Yeah. He's Plessinger like, goes on the inside. Yeah, he might be. And I think he actually has this pass. There it is. Seven's got the lead. Plessinger, no. Nope. The 96 fights back over the triple. Yeah, Aaron really should have closed him off at that point. Maybe the angle is a little bit different from what we saw, but. Oh! <laughs> Went leg off. We had a rider throwing it sideways. Now you're going to see Hunter slowly start moving back over if he feels like Aaron can get to that inside. He does, and he successfully seals it off. Meanwhile, Sexton has made the move on Stewart, so he's to third. Chase is a lot better. Now I think he can go back into how he's been the past few weeks or past few motos where second moto just kind of wear him out. He's right here. So I don't think Hunter would get away too far. And while Hunter's sussing out that tire, maybe Chase can close in on these guys. And you mentioned Eli Tomac buried 18th place for the four-time champ in his return to racing. So job one done for the 96. Get the scoop tire, take advantage of the start. Seventh whole shot of the year for him. And here we go. Can he hang on and finally get this overall win? Yeah, I'm curious to, to wonder, is Hunter the one of the only ones on the top with that paddle tire, or is it Aaron's on the same thing and Chase? Because if so, then they're all in the same boat. Well, he's put it together now here on lap two. A lot better than the first lap. Yeah, I mean, he'll figure it out. I mean, it's back up to speed. And this is the first time they've ridden this track being this dry. So it's different. So not only he's got to figure out a tire, he's got to learn the track and how different it is as well. And hopefully, whatever changes that you made, if you did, in between motos is the right way with the track being drier. And how critical is it? A lap ago, it looked like Plessinger had the pass made. Hunter was able to fight back. And this race looks a lot different than it did just two minutes ago, a lap earlier. Yeah, you notice Hunter took that outside line. He felt what happened last, um, the last lap with Aaron coming around. So he almost loses the rear end. That's a smart rider, been able to adapt, change. JT. Just spoke with uh, team manager Ian Harrison on the Red Bull KTMs, and both of them went to the traditional tire, and I think that's who Hunter Lawrence was referencing, right? He's gonna reference his biggest competition. So that's gonna be a little bit different. They're gonna be able to choose different lines. They're gonna be a little bit more aggressive in the harder sections of the racetrack, but mission accomplished so far for Hunter. He got out front, and we know how important track position has been. It's been the most dominant factor of the day thus far. Yeah, but he's going to have company. It looks like the number four, Chase Sexton, is starting to roll toward the front from third. Now, another thing I want to ask you, James, we talk so much about the knobby tire and the scoop tire spinning up under acceleration. What about braking some of these downhills? 
Well, is I, there a drawback there too? Well, I think the, if it was more at the front tire, then it, I think the braking would come more okay. into it. The only difference is with the the tire that Hunter has, the more not not knobby, but the scoop tire is that under braking that the, the bike would want to slide more, yeah. like more of a, a chatter. So you can have it where the back end starts losing the, you know, it doesn't have as good side grip. And so yeah. you can start losing the rear end, which will push the front end. So sometimes like because the rear is not hooking up, it actually can affect your front and being around. So Hunter has to pay attention to that. Um, but that being said, he's just gonna have to be open to be able to change these lines and keep that bike off that side. Try to be straight up and down, AC. Yeah, guys, I think that the biggest thing with the paddle tire is anytime you're on lean angle, anytime you have the bike leaned over, the traction is compromised. So it, it's more of a point and shoot uh, type of style around the track, and that's what you're gonna see from Hunter Lawrence. And unfortunately, it is Colt Nichols just getting back to racing last weekend at Unadilla, who is down. It's Will Hahn there is actually his trainer, even though Hahn works for the Charlie Designs Red Bull Gas Cast team. Man, you hope Colt's okay. That guy's been through some big ones in his career. Yeah, it looks like he's starting to get up. But yeah. yeah, and you know, to your point about the braking, the really the only part that he really would affect it just on the braking would be the drier parts of the right track. But I think with him, it's he can rot it. it obviously is fine. He's just gotta know how to, and obviously he's starting to figure that part yeah. out. But as this track goes on, he's just got to be careful on, on these looser parts. I mean, the harder parts of the racetrack, like coming up where they're about to come here, on that side length angle, getting through these rollers, that paddle tire probably is not going to be as good as Chase Exxon's or the KTM's because it's still at, a lingle, at an angle. He's turning going through this section. So as the race goes on, Hunter's going to have to be careful not losing the rear and over that. And the whole reason we dance this dance of the knobby tire versus the scoop is because the dirt off the start is so much deeper than it is around most of the rest of the track. That's why one tire can be better for the start but worse around the track and vice versa. As we catch up with Eli Tomac now at the bottom of this group. Made his way from 18th to now 13th, working on the French veteran Roman Pope. And Eli can't quite make the move. Yeah, this might actually help Eli. I mean, I don't know how he felt physically coming into this race. Like, does he feel like he has the endurance? So is it better to kind of get a, a bad start and just get used to passing people, getting used to being around guys, maybe having some fun compared to being up front with Hunter Lawrence, Chase Sexton, and then starting to fade because you're not ready to be back just because you haven't raised? So who knows? But I think Eli's smart. He did a good job of being here. He has the pace. He looks pretty good. So overall, no matter how this race finishes, I think Eli would be pretty um, satisfied that he has this, the tool still to compete against these guys. Yeah, and it's all a building process for the number three, coming back from a thumb injury and really coming back from a massive injury from last year with the torn Achilles. And just trying to log time, build the base, and maybe be that much stronger in the future. I got to imagine 2025 is part of, I got to imagine 2025 is part of the goal here, although they haven't officially announced that he's back yet. I got a sneaking suspicion he will be as he works on Pope. Yeah, Eli's being super patient down there. And, and even though he's battling with this guy, he's saving energy. Sometimes when you get close to these, uh, these tighter parts, when you know you can't pass, you just take a breath, like whether you're behind the guy in front of him and then just keep saving it. So it might help Eli as this race goes on save that energy and have it for the end. Makes the move on Pope. Watching Eli Tomac here, the veteran out of Colorado, living legend of this championship, five-time champion of Pro Boto Cross in the 250 and 450 classes, making his return from injury, not the start he wanted in this one. And just working his way into the top 12 now. Next on his list will be Phil Nicoletti. He is fourth all time, Tomac, in points. In co career points, fourth all time. Only three riders ever have scored more points than Eli Tomac. Just to give you an idea, that living legend status. Now the battle up front tightening with all three. Not just Sexton, Plessinger is back as well. Yeah, and you got to wonder, is this part track or are these guys picking it up? Because we saw the same thing happen in a 250 class. Guys have been able to catch them, but once they get to them, they lose the time. So is Hunter Lawrence, this is all he got. Is he struggling with the rear tire? Or is he just playing the game 
and just waiting for the battle. I love this outside here because nobody's going to be able to go around the inside of you that quickly. Oh, Plessinger's there. Yeah, Hunter, he's got a good point. Now, as long as he doesn't mess the corner up, which he came close to, he would be fine. Last weekend, riders know when the other guy's not feeling it. So Aaron probably knows. I'm sure his team probably say, hey, Hunter, or he senses Hunter's not that comfortable on these lean, uh, these harder packs. So once Aaron gets close to him, he's going to try to attack him because you can tell by Hunter's body position, he's not attacking four. He's really just waiting for that battle to come, and then he's uh, just going faster once Aaron's there. So the opportunity is to pass because you know that number four is going to try to come up and get around you if you don't. Oh, yeah, Sexton is all over him. Now Tomac in a battle with Nicoletti for 11. Oh, here's Sexton. Challenging Plessinger. Uh, what was that line? Uh, no, Chase was stuck. He wasn't yeah. really sure if Aaron was going to go outside or inside, and I think he just got fooled. And then he, Chase decided to just go down the middle. New line. <laughs> Let me give a shout out to my brother. He's only about three seconds behind Chase right here. He pops in his oh, shot. Yeah. So, yeah, as I was mentioned earlier, he'll continue to get better as the year goes on and on. And this is another step to that. Yeah, good job, Malcolm. And, and then, by the way, as startling as it seems for Hunter, have not has not won an overall yet. Plessinger has still never won a 450 photo, which seems shocking. That is shocking to me to hear how good this guy has been. I think he's had some close ones, um, but. He's also been in in the era of some pretty good road across riders of his time. But Aaron yeah. Blessinger is getting better. He's riding the best he's asked probably his whole career. And that moto win is coming soon enough, I believe. Yeah, could even be right here. But he's got to deal with his teammate, Sexton. Hunter Lawrence building a small gap at the moment while these riders battle. Oh, what a crossover from Sexton. Oh, I saw it coming. You can see where Chase went on that outside, see if Aaron can get back up the inside, but that was a power move, and that was set up by Chase. Seeing what Aaron was doing, nice move by him. You you lit up when you saw that one. Uh, something, I can I get happy when I see beauty like that. That was just <laughs> beautiful. Now Sexton then almost crashed it away right after that. Good job holding on, and now we're into the critical juncture. Sexton versus Lawrence again. Moto one, Sexton was not able to make it happen. He went down. Yeah, but I think Chase knows he's a lot closer. He's got more time, and there's a there's a significant difference where Hunter might be struggling. But here's the point. See, so you see uh, Chase going on the outside right now. Now he pivots, jumps on the inside, hits this double. Man, that was, that was a nice move. I lit up, then he almost crashed, and I sat down. But <laughs> and I believe we heard Chase went down right Wait, now. Wait, let's watch this. Watch the four. Does he lose the front end here? There it is. Now, so it looks like what happened. Here we go. The real speed. Oh, yeah. Looks like he wanted to get to that inside berm. Tire just goes over. That's a tough break for him, but. Malcolm Stewart up to third now. Sexton has a lot of work to do. It's the opening that Hunter Lawrence has been looking for to try to get that overall win. And, yeah, credit, like you said, Malcolm Stewart hanging in there, able to take advantage, at least for the moment. Sexton, like a freight train, going back toward the front. You're talking about some braking power. Did you see <laughs> uh, Chase almost lose the front end because he was so hard on the brake. He knew he wanted to get around my brother right before he got to that pivot. And as much time Chase went down, just like he did in that first moto, but I believe Chase is going to come back up, and he still has a chance to win this race. It's not too far back. No, 6.8 seconds. That is workable because we're still not even at the halfway mark. That was pretty. How much time he was able to gain. If he can pull that off, he's going to gain a second just in that section right there. And it's a lot easier because he's not going through all those rollers. He's missing them. So don't be surprised if this number four back on that seven here in the next lap or so. And how about Hunter Lawrence? Couple of attacks from Plessinger and now stretching it to 3.7 seconds. Scoop tire for the win at the moment. Let's see what the number four can put together. Hunter Lawrence hanging on. Now you wonder if Hunter's in this position. He's got two options. Either you know it's still 15 minutes left. Do you feel like you can hold this thing on? Or do you feel like Chase is going to come? Because 
if you feel like you have some pace, then maybe you try to attack right now, make Chase have to push it, like kind of what your brother does, put him in a situation where he has to take the chances, or you just keep riding your, riding your deal, let him come back up, and then keep putting these flurries of attacks. Once he closed, try to attack him then, make him frustrated that way. So we'll be interested to see what happens here in the next couple laps. We'll tell the story with Hunter. And you see Plessinger lurking in second, but right now the 96 trying to put it together. And credit to the perseverance of Hunter and this team. I mean, it looked like things were falling away by the time we got to Washougal, missed the podium for the first time, and could have easily thrown in the towel and just said, all right, it's not gonna happen this year. But he's come back much better after the time off. Hunter Lawrence trying to deliver. 14 minutes left, says his mechanic. Cameron Camera. And that's a critical point. That's halfway through the moto. So still plenty to play for. And Sexton is closing. He's taking it from 6.8 to 5.9. So Hunter's pulling away from Plessinger a bit. Send it down to Adam Cincerulo. And it's a critical part of the race, like you guys said, for, for Hunter Lawrence, having the first win dangling in front of your face, as I said before the start of the moto. It's really easy to let your mind wander to that, you know, to think about popping the champagne and thinking about how happy you'll be when you win this race. But and it's okay if your mind wanders, but you have to bring it back to the present moment as quick as possible. And um, yeah, rooting for Hunter here. Yeah, let's see if he can do it. The SMX track view giving an idea where the two KTMs are. Here's the gap. And Sexton is back to his teammate. Yeah, as I mentioned, I felt like Chase was going to be back on that 96. Now he has a little bit of open room. So Chase has been able to close in on these guys. But once you get close, it's been hard to pass. So if you have the pace, you can catch them, which that's what he's doing. The hard part is once you get there, getting around them. But before that, I saw Hunter Lawrence lose the front end in that sweeper section right after uh, you go up the old finish line jump. And I think a part of that is because of his rear tire being on the lean, he can start losing the rear, start pushing on the front. And he did a good job at saving it. But number four, just like he has in the previous weekend, he is coming. Yes, but how quickly can he make this happen? Or can they at least match the pace of Lawrence while they battle? Gonna try the inside. Oh, elbow to elbow. Plessinger's on the inside. Sexton not able to get out of that run. Coming up to the section where Chase passed him earlier in the moto. If Aaron doesn't watch out, Chase is going to do it again. Let's see if Aaron goes on the defense, which he should just slow down right here. No, he did it again. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, Aaron. Let's see if he can get on the outside. And oh. This outside actually has worked. Let's see if Plesker can use it. He wasn't far enough ahead, and Sexton's got him again. Yeah, Chase was too, he was too even with him, but yep. yeah, what Aaron should have done was slow down right there. Made Chase have to slow down to not hit that double, JT. I've been talking all day about when riders get there, they have to have a plan. You can't just wing it on this racetrack. It's too difficult to pass for that. So I don't know if Hunter Lawrence has picked up on that line. His lap times would tell me he hasn't. So Chase Sexton, that's where he'll make his move. He knows that line's work. He knows he's got it in his back pocket. So all he's got to do is get to the rear tire of Hunter Lawrence, set him up right there, and he'll fly right by. And the lap times, JT, yes, a 157.7 for Sexton, a 159.5. There you see it on screen. Nearly two seconds quicker with Sexton than Lawrence the last time around. Oh, a little mistake there. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning. If Hunter has more pace, then just try to go fast because Chase has to catch you, and he's going to take some chances to do it. The hard part for Hunter is that he is on that paddle tire, so he's got to be careful not to override this track where Chase does have the regular paddle tire, I mean, regular scoop tire, so... As you can see, Hunter, if he tries to go fast, did you notice that rear end sliding all the way up that face? And it's only going to get worse as this moto goes on, and it seems like he's really starting to struggle with that. And the drier the track gets, the tougher it will be. Sexton continuing to rally. And 
And this is a section where he's made up a ton of time and made passes. Right there. Putting the power down. And the SMX playoffs once again offering an opportunity for camping at all three rounds. Spots are going quick. Sign up today at supermotocross.com. Just like the scene we have here at Bud's Creek, people have been here since Thursday. Trackside, racing, watching, and we'll have the campgrounds at the playoff races. And all those campers, well, they're not at the campgrounds now. They're up along the fence. It's going to be close. Yeah, I mean, Hunter's doing a great job. And when we're talking about that section where uh, Chase passed Aaron, I don't even know if Hunter could do that because that takes a lot of lean angle. You've got to have trust on your rear, your bike. So I don't know if Hunter would do that anyway because of the tire choice that he made. Well, that might be easier for Sexton to make a pass if he can get there. We're down to eight minutes and two laps. Let me give you the motosport.com whole shot replay while got pulled by his teammate Plessinger there and had some work to do but the big problem was the crash after it and he has had to do everything to re-bridge the gap for the 96. Hunter Lawrence can he deliver his first ever overall win on a 450. And he's saying it was four tenths the difference in lap time Sexton dropped off, but Hunter dropped off even more. Now a two-minute versus the 159. Did you notice when Hunter leaned that bike over, he lost it, and he actually ended up burying it in the corner. So as I mentioned, I don't think he feels comfortable enough because he was going to try to hit that double, but as soon as he leaned it on the side, he started losing the rear tire. And as we're talking about these tires, it's not like the Dunlop's a bad tire. With it's just the difference between the what tire Chase has on the scoop tire compared to the regular knobby tire. Uh, one works better on that lean, and he needs that lean angle to hit that double where Chase is getting past Aaron. Yeah, the tire that Hunter has is designed for mud or yeah, sand, it's but it's just good off the start, so they use it even when we don't have sand. Man, that was beautiful what Chase did. He doubled into that uh, little corner, kept his foot on the pegs. That was nice. Oh, and it worked, because look how close he is to the 96. Thor Battlebox showing the fight for fourth. Anderson has caught Stewart. So that'll be another one to watch, but the battle for the lead is tightening. Sexton is right there now. Yeah, Chase is there. Ooh, this track's drying out and even more. I like these lines here because once you get in one rut, you kind of kind of got to stay there. And that's where it allows somebody like Chase, if you catch him, to be able to pass him because the guy has to stay in his line where in other parts of the racetrack, you can cut back and forth. So, but Hunter's done a great job. As quickly as Chase caught Aaron, he didn't catch Hunter that uh, quick. So Hunter probably tried picking up the pace. He realized Chase is coming. And I believe Chase has one opportunity if he's going to make the pass up here. Because if he shows Hunter that line and he doesn't make it, then Hunter can actually start blocking it by slowing down. Oh, OK. So I think Hunter's very smart and well aware of being able to dictate where guys are and uh, be able to change the lines up and adapt them to the track. And Sexton is not close enough to use that jump right there this time. Yeah, Chase goes a little bit farther inside, so maybe there's a rut that's getting kicked on there because he didn't even try to take that line. Maybe he just knows that he's, it's going to happen. As we say, Malcolm down to battle for four. Yeah. He's actually pulled back away from Jason. That's right. Yeah, they're in those rollers now, and he has pulled away from the monster Kawasaki rider of Anderson there. Stewart and the rock star Husqvarna. So as a rider, if you're Sexton, do you try to hide that line until you're really, really close? Well, I, th I think really Hunter won't be able to see it. So the only way Hunter would even notice that's there. Oh, he's going to try right now, James. You just do oh! that. Do that moment right there. Hunter is like, wait, 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 where do you come from? Uh, Look at this. Sexton in the lead. Wow. You ain't got to hide nothing. You no. really got to pass. But the hard part for Hunter, if he's going to get around, he's got to try to get around Chase now because the way Chase is rolling, he might build a, he might just roll away from him. But it's going to be hard from Hunter because he has to stick to his lines, which Chase knows all of them because of the tire situation. 
Yeah, do you have fewer options on the racetrack when you uh, have that tire? 100% you yeah. got a fewer options. And really the options come from is when you, you need a pass. So being able to get on the inside of Chase or doing what Chase did to um, Aaron, it's going to be hard for Hunter because he doesn't have a lean angle. And as you can see, Hunter didn't even know that he was even there. Because he looks over and he's like, where did that come from? That's because Chase went 100 miles an hour around that race <laughs> to that corner. Yeah, that was like NASCAR turn here. There we go. Hunter's like, whoa, seriously? That was a great move. Caught about surprise, as JT was mentioning. Once he got there, you got to make it happen. Adam, what'd you see? Guys, I see the growth with Chase Sexton. You see a couple years ago, he had this pace, but he would turn that mistake, that little tip over he had earlier, he would turn that into more mistakes and, and end up going the other way. And now it almost looks like it's just made him mad and he's going faster than he has all day. So just the evolution of Chase Sexton. Yeah, and I, and I agree. And we talked about last week, Chase is a different rider out front than in the pack. Sometimes when he's behind like he was, early in his race, it looked like he was just getting stuck in their pace. So, but when he went down, he lost that time. And I think it was somewhat put him back out front again, where he had to go fast. He could see the whole racetrack. And it's not surprising that he got that confidence and he was able to close on these guys, JT. Yeah, and sometimes you, you get in this thought process and, and that's exactly it. You're thinking too much. You're thinking about the title. You're thinking about where am I going to catch up to Hunter? You're thinking about why can't I find a way to get the whole shot? Your brain is doing too much. And then you have a crash like that and your brain shuts off. And I don't mean literally, but you don't worry about any of that anymore. And you just ride purely on instinct. A lot of that's anger and it's just reacting to the moment. And you can see it changed for Chase. His intensity picked up. He, he didn't seem to really care about what was going on, and that pushed him forward. We've seen it at times from him. You go back to Hangtown. You go back to these great rides he's had. It was almost always caused by something tipping his hand. He was able to just take those thoughts out of his head and ride the way he knows how. Yeah, absolutely. And just like Hangtown and maybe this race, the sense of, Okay, you show up in this moto like you're expected to win. Once you go down or you have a first corner crash, now there's nothing to lose. So you're riding out there just free because everything's lost for you. And when Chase is in that spot, he can come from last and, and win the race. So he's just got to figure out how to do that more often when it's out front, uh, when he's close to these guys, which is a lot easier said than done. But clearly, when the dude decides he wants to go beast mode, there ain't nobody out here in this field that he can even run that pace. Just a thing of beauty to watch now as the four tries to extend the overall win streak to five races. Yep, and he has put Hunter in the rear view mirror. Plessinger a distant third. Yeah, Malcolm Stewart hanging in there. Yeah, Malcolm's hanging in there. He's had pressure from Jason and Justin Cooper, so. I think Jason somewhat was probably going to like let Malcolm have it until Justin came in. So, man, Chase is in, a, he's in his own right now. I'm going to ask your brother about this track. He has one pro motocross top five. That was at this track. 2013. And looking to do it again. This is probably the best track for him. Yeah, I remember that 2013. Uh, actually, that's, I was stuck behind him for like seven laps. Oh, you remember that race? Oh, I remember the race because I think he took me out. So, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, we had to had a little family meeting afterwards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh but Fourth overall that day, third in the moto. Well, he's motivated. Yeah. Got to keep you behind him one way or another. Yeah, no, he did. It was in this corner. I was yelling at him for really? like eight laps. And he was like, I didn't even know you. I'm like, bro, come on. I'm like the only <laughs> Suzuki out there. I'm yelling at you every race. And Pops is coming out for both of us, though. So it was good. Malcolm, you were yelling in the corners. I was yelling at him. And eventually, I was so tired, I couldn't yell. I didn't have no breath. So. Oh, that's one way to, one way to step. If I can get him so tired, he can't yell at me anymore. I, don't oh, make it I wore my own self out. <laughs> yeah, cardio. The heart rate was through the roof from all the yelling. So Malcolm looking to hold on. Anderson had caught him. It's like something happened to Jason. He dropped back, but... Oh, yeah, Justin Cooper up the fifth now. Yeah, this is good. I mean, Malcolm's been, we talked about earlier, slowly getting better and better.
third, and this is what a star does. So this is where he feels like he belongs and he wants to be, and it's good to see him back up here. Best finish outdoors uh -oh. for a while. Well, here comes Jacob, but number 32, he's trying to get on the Captain America team as well, yeah. and he's battling with Aaron in the third and point. So Justin has a lot to fight for to try to get these extra points. See if Malcolm can hold him off with two laps left. Yeah, Justin Cooper could be in play for Team USA Motocross of Nations as well. As for Tomac, it never really materialized. He did eventually pass Nicoletti. It's up to 11, but that's going to be it for the number three. And that might end up being seventh overall for him. And the good thing is we'll see the three back at Ironman. Yeah, I'm looking at the lap times uh, the Eli. I, I believe Nick Letty might have fell and Eli would have got around him because Nick Letty did a 211, Eli did a 206, and there's only a three uh, second gap between there. So, uh oh, Cooper is right there on Malcolm right now. They got the lap rider in between them. The 93 of Bryce Shelley. Looks they like get around Malcolm. Shelley. Here we go. Looks like Malcolm's been out front with that number plate. Yeah. It's nice and clean. They Good spray on that thing. Seven gear out, out there. Either way, fourth or fifth, it's going to be the best. Not him. him. This is good. Yep. And the best part is beginning part of the season and Malcolm, this is when you know as a rider you've gotten better because it's second moto at the end of this championship and you're still fighting against a guy who's, you know, close to third in points. Hey, Justin, you know that ain't, that ain't going to happen. He might he'll let you go by, but not around the outside. Come on. So yeah, this part. Oh, he fought. Oh, not he's not it. letting him do it. Justin, I just told you <laughs> that he wasn't gonna do it. Come on. <laughs> not going around the outside. Oh, it's a good battle. Justin Cooper, Malcolm Stewart. There is Hunter Lawrence second. Way out in front of Plessinger now. Yeah, good route for Hunter. But you you want you wonder does the tire did that play into this you know because he actually looks like he's still pretty good but you can tell there was a little bit of traction issues some things that he wanted to do that he couldn't so maybe in the past that next time they're in this situation the bike has gotten better hunter's gotten better so maybe he'll rely and have that confidence like chase sexton to believe look i need the bike that works on the track because i with the start or not, I feel like I can come up here and maybe race against this guy, or I think he feels like he needs to be in front of Chase, and um, I think that might have hurt him in the second moto. No doubt, Sexton was able to put it together down the stretch, and it's going to be the second week in a row where it's 2-1-1-2 one, one, two between Lawrence and Sexton. And this is Chase Sexton taking control. It was a three-rider fight, both Jet and Hunter Lawrence in it early. Jet went out with a thumb injury. We hope to get him back for the playoffs in September, starting September 7th. And then what a battle that is going to be as Eli Tomac gets stronger. Cooper Webb will be back. But they all got to go through the number four, who will be the number one seed when the playoffs begin. Looks good. We get a shout out to KTM. They got two riders up in the top three, looking good. Tom Bial's riding really good. So their whole program. Future looks good with Julian Vermeer and, the, and mm -hmm. the rookies. RJ winning the championship. So a lot of stuff is going good for these guys. But man, to take Chase Sexton, some of the issues that he's had in the past, come over here to KTM, the way the season started, not like it was a struggle because he was on the podium the first race at Anaheim. Um, but to get at this position, the way he has and be dominating this championship, got to give him props and the whole team, KTM and Austria for it. Yes, this is a long game. There were many frustrating nights in Monster Energy Supercross, and to now be where they are in Pro Motocross, just never giving up on it. That has always been his motto, and it has paid off. Five straight overall wins. Chase Sexton conquers Bud's Creek. Even with the crash. And I think that's why he's even more pumped on this one. Yeah, you start to think sometimes the crash is what made you come back and win the race. The crash spun off you being free, but Hunter Lawrence did a good job. I still see a lot more fight in him. Um, he's a lot closer than this, but man, when Chase gets rolling, as I said, he is hard to beat. Well, just imagine the lessons Hunter Lawrence as a rookie is learning right now. I mean, he is being pushed to his limit and giving it his all every week. He's going to be formidable in the years to come. Yeah, and say that again. He's a rookie. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he's a rookie, but he's 
with his brother and how good he's been all year long. It's a surprise as we're watching Grant Harlan. Running. We're all about the points here at SMX, 15th. Yeah. And he has been around the top 10 in most of the motos as of late. 15th is actually below par for what he's been doing recently. But he is rallying. Last year he was great in Supercross. Kind of ran out of energy. It's pretty fried by the time the playoffs began. This Went through this. Last year was the first time of these playoffs. So they kind of know how to work, and especially yep. like this. They know what they need to do, and you can see it. That's Pope, the Frenchman, yeah. riding the wide motorcycle. He was like, look, the race is over. We shouldn't be battling. But <laughs> <laughs> as we said, these single points, they matter as Grant bears it in this corner. Maybe I thought he was going to try to do a Chase Sexton move in these rollers, but kind of messed that corner up. A17th in SMX points. I'm glad we got to show this. This is one of the things that you usually only see as a fan at the races. In, in Pro Motocross, you will see a battle for 14th, and you would swear it's the SMX World Championship or Daytona Supercross or Anaheim one on the line. Yeah, I mean, he's just finished that race. He's just as tired as the guy. Absolutely. He put as much energy as yeah. that. Good to see this guy out. Your overall winner, Jay Sexton. Keeps it rolling, Jay Sexton. We'll be talking about his title clinch scenarios as we head to Ironman next week.